Hello, my name's Adam Hills. Welcome to Spicks and Specs, the music quiz show for people that know their drum from their bass, their rhythm from their blues and their hip from their hop. Our first team captain was just a walking down the street singing do I diddy diddy dum diddy do. He's actor and comedian Alan Bro. Hi. Thank you. Alan's first guest was a member of 80s band I'm Talking, has sold over one million records as a solo artist and has just released a new album with the West Australian Symphony Orchestra. Please welcome the one and only Kate Sobrano. <laughs> Alan's final team member is a comedian whose family doctor was Missy Higgins' father. <laughs> to this day, he claims that her song Scar was written about his appendix operation. <laughs> Please welcome Michael Chamberlain. Thank <laughs> hey, you, Adam. Happy to be here. Looking beautiful. Our second team captain was clicking her fingers and shuffling her feet, singing do I diddy diddy dum diddy do. She's Triple J's Miff Warhurst. Yeah. <laughs> Miff's first guest tonight has gone from listening to 70s rock to being a member of the Wiggles. That's right, he went from T-Rex to Dorothy the Dinosaur. Please welcome Murray Cook. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Miss final guest is an American comedian who once had lunch at the same cafe as Ozzy Osbourne, but was afraid to say hello in case Ozzy bit his head off. <laughs> He's performing at the Melbourne International Comedy Festival. He's Arj Barker. <laughs> uh, now, Kate, before we go on with the show, we, we have lots of guests on the show, and we like dredging up old music videos of them from oh, the past. Yeah, good one. This is uh, I'm Talking. Oh, trust me. <laughs> That's sensational. <laughs> How old were you in that clip? Oh, I was about 15 or 16. Fantastic. I love that hat. The hat was great. It was very 80s, wasn't it? Mm. I must say, there was a, uh, a film clip you did by the name of uh, Bedroom Eyes. <laughs> you were wearing quite the dress, my friend Kate, and it <laughs> got me through some very... Uh, <laughs> Since we're uh, admitting stuff, uh, Murray, um, <laughs> <laughs> some about that thing. <laughs> Let's move on, shall we? <laughs> Round one is called Know Your Product. Each team gets to pick a topic, everybody will be quizzed on it. Your choices tonight are uh, a modern form of music called post rock, composers from the Romantic period, the old Romantics, country music with a backbeat, rockabilly. And songs from Australian TV and movies, Australian screen music. Uh, Miff, you can pick the first topic tonight. I've got a question. I mean, post rock's a term that we hear quite a lot, but does anyone really know what it means? Yeah, it's when you, it's when you mail a rock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind, it kind of refers to modern experimental mm. rock. We're happy with that. Alrighty. Uh, Alan, what topic do you think is going to help your team? Um, look, I think we'll go with Australian screen music tonight. Cool. Right. Let's start with post rock. Everyone on your buzzers? Let's play Specs and Specs. Your first question for one point. Members of which Melbourne pioneering post-rock band are Warren Ellis... Uh, yep. The Dirty Three. Uh, Mick Turner and Jim White are the Dirty Three. Nice work out. <laughs> Next question with two points. Following the groundbreaking album OK Computer... Kid A? Uh, yes, Kid A and is one of the answers. And Amnesiac? And OK, what I needed was their first completely post-rock album, which was released in 2001. It was Kid A. I'm going to open it up to this side. Okay. Uh, what was the first song on it? I'm going to throw it back to this side. <laughs> Is it an American anthem? Yeah. The first song was Everything in Its Right Place. Ah. Finally, for three points, this song is taken from an almost entirely vocal-based album by post-rock artist Björk. One breath away. I need you to give me three things. The name of the song, the album, and the major international event. Yes? The song is Oceania. I could never say it on air either. Oceania. Oceania. I really struggle with that from Medulla. Beautiful album. Yep. And the international the event that she sang it was... The Winter Olympics? The opening of the Winter Olympics? Uh, it actually wasn't, so I'm going to open it up to this side. I'd say it was the opening of the uh, <coughs> Summer Games in Athens. It was the oh, 2004 <laughs> Athens Olympics. Well done. Yeah. So that's two points from this team, one point to our team. On to Australian screen music. Your first question for one point. Delta Goodrum's first hit single, Born to Try, debuted on which Australian TV show? It'd have to be Neighbours, wouldn't it? It was most definitely Neighbours. Well, well done. done. For two points. This is from an ABC TV series about an emerging pop band which spawned an Australian top 20 single. I need two things. The name of the show and the name... Yep. 
uh, sweet and sour, and then I buzzed in too quickly to get the end of the question. Adam. The show was sweet and sour. Sweet and sour, Tracy Mann, Batter Band, sweet and sour. Sorry, mate. The rest of the question was, I need the name of the fictional band the around which it's centred. Oh. The Takeaways. It was oh. The Takeaways. Well done, Murray. Yes. Not only have you taken the loyalty of my child away from me, but you've also taken the second half of my question. Oh. My child is only in love with the Wiggles and won't, won't answer to my call to get away from the television once the Wiggles are on. No offence, but what sort of mother asks their child to come away from the television while the Wiggles mm. are on? <laughs> have you got a two-year-old? Not on me. <laughs> <laughs> right, three points on the line for your final question. This is the screen song, The Monkey in Me. I need you to name three things. The actress, the film it's from, and the other single from that film. Starstruck was the movie. Yep. I can't remember the actress's name and the other single from the movie, but I'm sure it was uh, the one. Uh, uh, she Got Body, She Got Soul. Yep. Oh, yeah. She Got Body, She, she got, got Soul. It was Body and Soul, body so I'll give you a point cool. for that. That's pretty close. What and was the name of the actress? Nicole Kidman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I'll no, open I it up. Know. I thought it looked like Nicole Kidman's kind of weird sister. The actress was... Joe Kennedy. Oh, of course. At the end of the first round, the scores are Alan, Kate, Michael on three points, Miff, Murray and Arj way out in front, seven points. Yeah. Each team will be given three artists and three interesting facts. You have to match the artist to the fact. Tonight, both teams have to match the stars with their nicknames. Alan, Kate and Michael, your stars are the woman who starred in The Bodyguard, Whitney Houston, Oscar winner and Grammy winner, Cher, and the lady <laughs> who really, really wanted some water, Melissa Etheridge. You have to match them with their nicknames, which are Nippy, Lucky, and JPC. Well, Cher is well known for not wearing hardly anything at all. Mm. What was the song that the video... If went, I Could Turn Back Time. ...where she was sitting if on the... If I could turn back time. A little lower in your voice. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, so it, it could be nippy for her. <laughs> she did go out with Richie Sambora from uh, Bon Jovi, therefore her nickname probably should be Mental. Um... <laughs> Kate, what do you think? Actually, I'm still trying to work out what that is, the JPC, because that's going to mean everything to me. Well, the only thing I can think is with JPC is that sure, that's not her real name. I believe she might be Armenian mm. or something like that. Yeah. And I believe mm. that her original name is quite long right. and quite complex. So we'll give her well, JPC. Like me, when I was a kid, my, my brother nicknamed me CAC because it was easier to say it for whatever known under a reason. CAC, you know, Nippy, Whitney. Nippy. Oh, yeah, that could be it. Nippy. Yeah. Witty. Nippy. Witty. Nippy. Witty. Witty. Yeah. <laughs> that nippy thing does look like someone who'd work in a 7-Eleven, and I'm tipping Whitney Houston probably isn't far from working in a 7-Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> so that might work. Who's that on the right, though? Is that Garth from Wayne's World? <laughs> <laughs> I they both share a love of the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what do you reckon? OK, Whitney Houston is nippy. Uh-huh. Uh, sure is JPC and Melissa Etheridge is lucky. Three points out of three. Oh. <laughs> Whitney Houston's nickname was Nippy. Shares is JPC, which stood for Just Plain Share. Ah. And Melissa Etheridge is lucky. Uh, now, if you're wondering what Melissa Etheridge has been up to lately, it was recently announced she'll be starring in a sitcom as a lesbian living with her heterosexual male best friend. One critic predicted it will be, quote, like Will and Grace, except cancelled. <laughs> Miff, Murray and Arj, your artists are the man who thinks he's bigger than both Jesus and the Beatles, Oasis' Noel Gallagher. The man who thinks he's bigger than Jesus, the Beatles and Noel Gallagher. <laughs> U2's Bono. And the man who makes Greg Matthews' hair look decent, Sir Elton John. But how good are those sunglasses? Yeah. Pretty special. This time you have to match them to their childhood nicknames, which are... Brezhnev, the Antichrist, and Hercules. Well, Brezhnev had big, yeah, yeah really like, big eyebrows. He had so. horns. Yeah, it was special. <laughs> so it might be an eyebrow thing. I mean, I'm sort of an expert of, of big eyebrows because me and my friends co-host a website called monobrow.com, <laughs> which is celebrates the unity of your eyebrows. <laughs> Our slogan is, uh, don't tweeze to please. <laughs> <laughs> or we have oh several God. slogans. Uh, one is fun. Uh, monobrow.com, make the connection. <laughs> and 
So a bit of an, being a bit of an expert, I know that he is one of our uh, our celebrity mono bros. Was well, this was it personal? Did you you know obviously mono bro? You were sporting one at some point. Clearly not now. As you get into your late twenties and early thirties, some some people they just have a natural uh, recession of their mono brow, and they become actually bi browed once again. <laughs> Can you be bi-brow curious if you're a mono brow? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Right, so... On that note, well, yeah. I'm going to go with that. That is brilliant. <laughs> that is brilliant. So, no, Noel Gallagher, you have to be British and everything. You would have got that as a little kid, because that would have been around about the same time. And Bono. The, well, I was thinking also the Elton John one. That, that picture underneath him just looks like it goes with him. It does. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Hercules is actually... Elton John's um, middle name now. He's, he's Reg, Reg Dwight, but his full name that he uses now is Elton Hercules John. So I'm assuming that Hercules is Elton. Okay, so that only leaves one more. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Just think, everybody. It's got to be a clue. <laughs> So, wrapping up, what were you saying? No, Gallagher, Brezhnev, <laughs> yep. Bono, the Antichrist, of course, Elton is Hercules. Absolutely correct, three yeah. times. Noel Gallagher's nickname was Brezhnev because he had bushy eyebrows like former Russian President Leonid Brezhnev. Bono was called the Antichrist because as a child he was argumentative and outspoken. Thank God he grew out of that. <laughs> and Elton John was called Hercules after the horse in Steptoe and Son. <laughs> After that round, the scores are Alan, Kate, Michael on six points, Miff, Murray, Arge still in the lead, ten points. Oh. Round three is called Sample Mania. Each team will hear short snippets of songs. You have to listen carefully and identify as many songs as you can. Miff, Murray and Arge, you're up first. Okay. These are your songs. I am a hurricane, listen to yourself, Wild Wild West was in there. Well, I didn't know it's that. End of the, the first one was R.E.M., The End of the World as we know it. That's, Pump It Up, Elvis Costello. That's right. Um, the third the, one the was... Bob, the Bob Dylan one. Um, 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 uh, Subterranean Homesick Blues. Subterranean Homesick Blues. And the last one was... We didn't start the fire. We didn't, yeah. yeah. Billy Joel. Let's have a listen back. It was End of the World as we know it, R.E.M. Pump It Up, Elvis Costello. Subterranean Homesick Blues, Bob Dylan. Wild Wild West, Escape Club. And we didn't start the fire. Billy Joel, five oh, points out. That's right. Alan, Kate, Michael, it's your turn. Here are your song snippets. Strangers of the Night, uh, Walk on the Wild Side. Where's that second last one? It just goes in and out of your head. It's amazing. No, it's not amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's the opposite of amazing. <laughs> what are, they've all got Doobie Doo in them, so yeah, that, no. that narrows it down. How many okay. songs can have Doobie Doo in them? Oh, oh, what a night. Have you said oh, that? Oh, what a night. Oh, what a night. Yep. Yeah. Do, oh, do, uh, Tom's, Tom's, um, Tom's Diner. Duran Duran. Girls on Film. Girls on Film. One in a million. Wait, no? you sure that was the it song? Was I'm going to open it up to the other team because no, no, I've got a feeling no. they know it. Hungry like a wolf. Let's listen back to the songs they were. <laughs> Strangers in the Night, Frank Sinatra. <laughs> Tom's Diner, Suzanne Vega. <laughs> Hungry like the wolf, Duran Duran. <laughs> Oh, what a night, Frankie Valley in the Four Seasons. And Walk on the Wild Side, Lou Reed. You guys got four, you guys got one. Well done. That was hard. That was hard. You get distracted by the bees. Right, at the end of that round, the scores are Alan, Kate, Michael on 10 points, Miff, Murray, and Arge out in front, 16 points. <laughs> one member of each team has to sing well known songs using the words of an unrelated book. Uh, your teammates have to identify the songs. Before we get on to it, though, while we're talking substitutes, 
Murray, yes. uh, I know a few people who have gone to see the Wiggles recently, and you're using a substitute at the moment. We have been, yeah, yeah. Greg was in hospital, he had a hernia operation, and uh, obviously couldn't wiggle. So, uh, <laughs> we don't say it's Greg, but we, we say he's helping us out. It's, this is our special friend, Brett, and, and Brett comes out. And... <laughs> wow, it sounds like an awful conversation you have with your mum. <laughs> Well, that explains the skivvies. <laughs> Just out of interest, so like, you know, when you're at work and you've got to call the boss up, you're feeling a bit cook or not feeling cook. In the Wiggles, who's the boss? Who gets the phone call? Dorothy the dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been approached to do an in excess style search for a new Wiggle show? So I like, haven't, but I reckon that's series three. <laughs> I just could imagine all, all four of you sitting there just going. <laughs> 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 Right, we'll move on, shall we? <laughs> Kate, you'll be singing for Alan and Michael tonight, and you'll be substituting lyrics from Mounted Police in New South Wales, a history of heroism and duty since 1821. That's your book. Those are your songs. Don't show your teammates. Ladies and gentlemen, Kate Sobrano. Yay! Put a little, uh, put a little bedroom eyes into it, Kate. Come on. Okay, baby. Just for you. Hands on the table, Chamberlain. <laughs> The first military mounted police were assembled in great haste and had to be content with horses taken from government cars, which in turn had to make do with bullocks. Uh, baby love. It was baby love by the Supremes. Well done. No. The arrested men proved to be the scapees, the leader and the actual killer was one John Jenkins. Um, Hallelujah. It's yes. Hallelujah by Leonard Cohen. Yeah, baby! <laughs> the police consisted of about 45 mounted police drawn up in two divisions and about 24 foot police. The foot police were drawn up in front of the government buildings while the mounted police were a little to one side so they could command the ground in front over the To Sir With Love. It was To Sir With Love by Lulu. Well done, ladies and gentlemen. Kate Sobrano. That was sensational, yeah. Kate. You can't do Lulu in half measures, what can I say? You, you know, know what, what that, I'm that should be on a T-shirt. Uh, <laughs> now, Kate, when you started in I'm Talking, you were, you were 17. Uh -huh. How was it being interviewed when, and trying to put forward a good face when, you, when you're 17? Well, actually, I remember a story. Um, we had a rock arena show. It was on the ABC, and it was um, a very highbrow rock critic, Basha Bonkowski, with that lovely mm -hmm. voice. Do you remember? Yeah. And she said, yeah, what are your first impressions of Sydney? <laughs> and I said, well, I really, I love, I love Sydney. It's really great. And I'll, I don't mind the drive, even though it's like 10, you know, 10 hours. They've got these great ham and cheese fellatios. <laughs> <laughs> she said, I, she said, I think you mean focaccios. <laughs> I said, oh, do I? Oh, OK, yeah, focaccios. <laughs> so I actually think that that was a charming moment. And it showed, you know, it showed that um, I had yet more to learn about life. Though you were spicing it up with a bit of ham and cheese, though. <laughs> You'll be singing for Mip and Murray, and you'll be taking your lyrics from The Popular Guide to Puppy Rearing by Alwyn Gwyn Jones, Championship Show Judge. That's your book. There are your songs. Thanks. Don't show your teammates. Arj Barker. Yeah, thank you very much.
Now, this is the popular guide to puppy rearing as opposed to the unpopular guide to puppy rearing, <laughs> which is all about cats. <laughs> okay, here we go. And I just want to say that uh, you did a great job, Kate, and uh, I almost feel like it's unfair. I feel like you might have sung that book before. <laughs> all right. Okay, here we go. Oh, shit. <laughs> Oh, why did I sign up for this? All right. <laughs> it is a curious fact that the best show bitches are not necessarily the best broods, and many of the big winners in all breeds are produced by rather ordinary-looking bitches. <laughs> Made it to the right dog and beautifully bred themselves. The breeding of a bitch is all important. An experienced breeder in any breed can prophesy with reasonable accuracy what kind of puppies a bitch is likely to produce from examining her pedigree. While it's not necessarily a show specimen, she should not have any big faults of her breed. Who's that thing by Snoop Dogg? <laughs> It wasn't that good. The song, the song was Hotel California by the Eagles. <laughs> Did I not sound like that? Uh, okay, so uh, it's my fault if everyone hears bloody tone deaf. <laughs> <laughs> song two, please. Uh, all right, get ready for some fun. Some highly strong bitches become very excited after whelping our most upset if the puppies cry. The Muppets. That was the thing from the Muppet Show. Yeah. Right. <sighs> kind of get in the right mood, right? Diarrhea <laughs> is a common. Puppy trouble that and also another brick in the wall. It <laughs> is another brick in the wall by Pink Floyd. Ozbaka. <laughs> After this round, the scores are Alan, Kate, Michael on 13 points. Miff, Murray, Arge still out in front, 18 points. <laughs> It's time for the final countdown. Teams, hands on your buzzers. One point for a correct answer, one point off for a wrong answer. Your questions start now. According to Dice Straits, you get your money for nothing. And, and your, your chicks for free. Exactly, your chicks for free. Actor Jack Black is also lead singer. Tenacious D. For yes, Tenacious baby. D. From which culture does the Shakuhachi flute originate? Papua New Guinea. <laughs> <laughs> It was Japan. <laughs> Name the 20-something punk light rocker who said she was like, quote, Sid Vicious for a new generation. Pink. No, it was it's Avril Lavigne. Oh. oh, really? Mm. Oh, she's dreaming. Yeah. <laughs> what time of day did Corey Hart wear his sunglasses? At night. Exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> Finally, for one point, sing the chorus to American Pie by Don McLean. Oh, that's just humiliating. <laughs> bye, 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 Miss American Pie. Took Pie the Chevy to the, the levee, but, but the levee was dry. Good old boys are drinking, drinking whiskey and wine. Singing, singing this'll, this'll be the day that I die. die. This'll be the day that I die. Pretty good. Sing it like you're in a pub at three in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> At the end of the show, the scores are Alan, Kate, Michael ended up on 16 points. Miff, Murray, and Arge, one point in front, 17. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Would you please thank all our guests for tonight? Kate Sobrano, Michael Chamberlain, Murray Cook, and Arge Barker. And of course, our two team captains, Alan Bro and Miff Warhurst. Yeah. If you want to learn more about the world of music, just visit the Spix and Specs website, but we leave you tonight with an amazing piece of Australian screen music. Earlier in the show, we mentioned Delta Goodrum singing on Neighbours. Well, 
That pales in comparison to a band called the Bush Rangers, who made an appearance on a well-known Aussie show in the 70s using one of the cast members on drums. Thanks for watching Spicks and Specs. My name's Adam Hills. Good night, Australia. Very beautiful and talented young lady. A new member of our group. <laughs> Hop, she'll stop the traffic when she passes by and stop and wish that you were where she's going. Hopperty hip, hop, hop, she'll skip hop, hop. into your heart. You'll wonder hop, why the world is all a glimmer and a glowing. Cute as a cobbler and as busy as a bee. Happy as a footballer, laughing in a dream. Hopperty hop, 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 she's a hop, hop, she's a hop, hop, she'll wave goodbye. That's when you hop, 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 hop